Hey guys and welcome to another video. I am so so sorry about the delay. It has been absolutely ages. I'm in somewhere totally new. Um, if you're new, I'm Anisha. I am a first year medical student at Bristol. Um, these are my university halls. I've been here for about two months and I've been super busy. So sitting down and making YouTube videos hasn't really been kind of top of my list, but I'm really, really keen to make this video. And so I was like, I'm gonna do it today. Um, and so today is all about my volunteering experience that I went on during summer with VSO and ICS in Kenya. Um, and just a bit more about the program, about what it was, what I liked about it. Um, and because I've got loads and loads of qu questions about it over the last kind of couple of months, really. So I just wanted to make a little video to answer them. So who is VSO? Who is ICS? What's it all about? VSO is Voluntary Service Overseas, and they are a worldwide charity. They work in many, many countries all around, um, and they aim to end marginalization and also poverty. ICS is kind of a little project within that huge VSO umbrella, um, and they are International Citizen Service, um, and they are a specific program which works with 18 to 25 year olds in the UK, um, and I think not actually just the UK, in many different countries, um, but specifically for me in the UK, um, and they have nine to 12 week volunteering projects in some of the countries that VSA operate in. If you have heard of NCS, if you're in the UK, and that's National Citizen Service, ICS is kind of like a sister project to that, so it's kind of similar. Um, and so, yeah, around about kind of last year, actually my first gap year, so I took two years out, so my first gap year, I wanted to volunteer, and I heard a bit about VSO and ICS, um, and I think I saw them from like on Instagram, like they were on my like sponsored, like they had been, when I was scrolling, um, I had heard a bit about them and I really kind of liked what they're about. Um, I would say what kind of helps the VSO stand out from all the other many different charities that offer volunteering. Um, I would say they're really passionate about sustainable volunteering. You might be familiar with that term, you might not be. That just means volunteering that's really looking at a long lasting impact and specifically impact to the community that you're helping with. Um, when I was looking at volunteering, there were so many who were like, oh, you know, you can come volunteer at this place for like two weeks, um, but it's like thousands of pounds. And I wasn't really sure, you know, what am I doing? Am I really gonna be helping people? Am I having an impact? Where's that money going to? Whereas VSO, I would say, are more transparent. Um, I think they've been going on for about almost 60 years, I think, so, you know, they're. 60, 70 years, something like that. They've been going on for a really long time, plenty of experience, a really sort of um, well-respected organisation, I'd say. Um, and so, yeah, so I looked into them. I really liked it. Unfortunately, in my first year, I only really could offer eight weeks and they're really, they, they're quite strict on the fact that you need to have at least nine weeks. Um, and so when it came to my second year, I was like, brilliant, I've got loads of space and time. Let's do it then. Um, the first thing I did around last November, so maybe this time actually last year, I did an online application. If you just type in VSO ICS into Google, they have an online form, just kind of personal details, a bit about why you want to volunteer and the dates that you want to volunteer between. Ideally, you'll be a bit more flexible. You like So for me, I had like kind of five, six months that they could work with. Um, obviously, if you're kind of, maybe you're still at school, maybe you're at uni, you're working, you're trying to fit it in, um, really try and give yourself like a solid amount of time so that they can like work with you. Um, and so after I did that, I think I had a phone call just as like a follow up, just to check I, you know, I was fine with it. If I had any questions about the program, um, just for a bit more clarity on things. Um, and then I had an assessment day in January. Um, and the assessment day was made up of two parts. So one part was kind of a group assessment. So you're, it's just seeing how you work in a team really. Basically they give you a couple of exercises, you work with people. It's more just seeing, are you someone who gets along with people? Um, the ICS program is all about teamwork, being able to understand other people, communicate well, be flexible, things like that. Um, so really kind of seeing if you're able to do that in that situation. And then the second part is an individual interview. And I won't lie, I've done quite a few kind of med school interviews and job interviews. And yeah, I would still say it's fairly, um, it's quite a in-depth interview, I'd say. And I think that's quite important. They are doing it for you almost, because they know you're going somewhere for three months, possibly four. 
um, you know, in an unfamiliar setting, how are you actually going to deal with that? So they do ask, you know, how have you ever been in a difficult situation? How would you cope? Um, you know, they really just try and make sure that you're the right kind of person. Because sometimes you're the right person, but it's just not your time. Maybe in a year's time, you're better for the program, that kind of thing. They just check, are you going to be able to kind of hack it really? Um, and so, yeah, I had my interview. I think they got back to me in about a week being like, congratulations, you've got in. Um, and then it's very much based on your dates and the dates of their projects. They will see um, which country and which place you're suited to go to. Um, and so I would say it's really important to try not to be like, I really, really want to go to Bangladesh or Nepal or, you know, wherever. Try and be as open minded as possible, because at the end of the day, they have so many projects, so many wonderful things. Um, I think regardless of where you go, you're probably going to have an amazing time. Um, and so, yeah, I was placed in CIA Kenya on the west side near kind of Lake Victoria and Uganda. Um, and so before that, um, and you do have kind of a weekend of training, actually, where you get to meet your group. So I had seven or six other UK volunteers. Um, and actually within Kenya, VSO had about six or seven different places where they'd been working. So during our weekend training, all the people from who were going to go to Kenya from the UK all came together, all had the same fairly rigorous training about, you know, what is VSO, what does it stand for, um, what's Kenya like, any kind of keeping safe, just things so you have a feel a bit more comfortable and confident. Um, you also have to fundraise, and that's quite a big part, I would say, of VSO and ICS. So how much you fundraise ha um, really depends on kind of what they ask of you, um, and that really depends on your parents' income pretty much. So you either have to fundraise 800 or 1,500, which is a you know, fair big difference. Um, but I had to, I was given 1,500, and at first I won't lie, I thought that was really, really just impossible. I was like, how on earth am I going to do that? Um, but it absolutely is possible. Um, I know at the start it can be really daunting, it's a huge amount of money. Um, for me, I kind of really thought, well, what what do you, what skills are I, do I have? What do I enjoy doing? What can I provide? Um, and also, who do I have? So what can I give? and who can help me. So I knew I really liked baking, so bake sales. I liked dancing, so did dance classes. People I knew, I've got all my family, all my friends. I've got school friends, I've got school teachers. I've got lots of just people that I know from my like drama clubs and things like that. Um, and so it seems a bit tenuous, but you really just gotta use everyone that you've got. Um, so for example, I did a bake sale at school. Um, I did dance classes for some of my mum's friends' kids. Um, I went to like a local boot sale, um, you know, small, small things like that. You'll be surprised. You know, some people you wouldn't have expected would give you money. You know, some people will be willing, you know, you'll be really touched, I think, by just how many people are willing to support you. Um, if you're looking for grants, if you're in London or Essex, really look for Jack Petchy Foundation. I think they give up to £400. Um, which is brilliant. You just need to do a quick online form about where the money's going to, what you're planning to do with it. Um, and they very much just send you a check quite instantly almost. Um, and it's just at the end of your volunteering, you just got to give them like a summary of what you did with the money. Um, and that's really, really wonderful. I think re recommend that. I think the Rotary Club is another way to possibly get grants as well. Um, and try to maybe aim to do one big event. So maybe that's a pub quiz, a charity night, a uh, curry night. So I did a charity night, which honestly was one of the toughest things I've ever had to do. Um, all my friends were pretty much at university, so I didn't have that kind of support network. However, I did have my incredible family and my friends kind of who are still at home. Um, and so I organised a charity night at my local hall. I had to organise like ticket sales online, um, like all the like marketing and things for posters and whatnot, um, catering and food sourcing entertainment and acts from friends. Um, I did a raffle, which I really recommend. Um, getting prizes for my raffle, I literally went to like every local business and was like, please, I'm doing this. This is the charity. This is the event. Do you have anything to like donate? You'll be surprised. I didn't think people would give anything, but I had, I had restaurant vouchers. I had massage vouchers. I had pottery things. I had wine. I had so much, you know, so many local businesses were so, so keen. Um, to kind of uh, donate, which was really, really touching. Um, and actually the charity night was a huge success. I think after like 
spending costs we had 600 pounds we raised from that one night 100 of that i think was purely raffle so that's why i really emphasis on raffle um and so i actually ended up all in all i think fundraising about 2000 2200 something like that which is way more honestly at the start i was like i don't think i'm going to be able to do this um and what i really found bso were helpful with is they would call you up every now and then and be like, how's the fundraising going? Do you need help? What are your ideas? And they were really supportive. Um, so about the actual kind of volunteering trip. So all the Kenya lot, we all met at Heathrow Airport. and We all went together. Really important to say now, VSO, once you have reached your fundraising, they pay for your flights to wherever you're going, your accommodation there, and your kind of spending costs while there. Obviously, those spending costs are minimal. So to, you know, for your lunch, for your food, for your kind of basic hygiene, um, you know, you are living like a fairly basic life. Um, but absolutely, I think it's possible to go volunteering and not have to spend any of your money, which is, you know, when you think about it, yes, you have to fundraise. Um, but they really do also emphasis, emphasize that when you are fundraising, try not to be like, pay for it all yourself it just it feels like you're paying for the experience it doesn't want to you don't want it to be like that instead you want to feel like you've worked hard and you've got to this place and you've had the huge support um of your like local communities to get you there which is really nice um in terms of what i did so i was in siya which is on the west um of kenya um and so um you have kind of two parts i'd say one part, you're on placement. So I was in a school for children with disabilities. Uh, we did do some kind of teaching sessions, but a lot of it was working on like government, local government level, liaising with the school, government, trying to plan things. So a bit more long term, really try things that really kind of have a long lasting effect. Um, then we also helped with women in the local community, uh, providing entrepreneurships and uh, sessions on like business plans and saving um, and how to get grants and funding for businesses. Um, and that was really, really wonderful. And, you know, and we also alongside that, you it's really great. You have opportunities to if you have an initiative, you're given the chance to do that. So one thing that myself and a few of my friends found there wasn't really a strong almost like mentorship program going on a lot of the girls in the local community felt uninspired um, and so we set up um, a mentoring scheme which is and I've been here for two months now that scheme is still going on um, throughout the entire pro process like I said VSO are really stressed on it being sustainable so when you are making an initiative they say well how is that going to last when you leave and I'm so so proud I'm still in that group chat with ambassadors and women from that community who update us every kind of week or so being like we did sessions at these places and this place and it was really good and it's really lovely to know even after we've left that's still going on and it's still having an impact which is really um great to hear um in terms of your living um you are living with a host family i think i had the best host family in the world i am um, i loved it i was with mama doris um, and her grandchildren whom all of whom i love i i adore them all so so much my host family was so lovely. My local community were really lovely. I felt really safe. I felt really comforted. Although you are miles from home, it was okay. You know, I felt really, really great. It also, it's really brilliant. You're not only just there with UK volunteers. They have volunteers from like in country. So we had about 15 volunteers from all over Kenya who worked with us as well. Um, and I made so many wonderful friends. Mercy, who I absolutely adore. George. Um, you know, so many great people I met. Um, I don't think what else I need to tell you guys. I know lots of people always ask about Wi-Fi. Um, there is, we had Wi-Fi at the VSA office. And then you have on your phones like SIM cards. So you have like data that you can use. So I could still go on like Instagram or whatever when I was back at um, my host home. Uh, food wise, I'm pretty flexible. So I was quite happy to eat, you know, but they are really, like mama was so adaptable. If you were like, can we have a bit more this or less that? Totally fine with that. Um, but yeah, all in all, I do think, I know, I think I've heard lots of people have various experiences. Some people really enjoy, some people really found it difficult or it wasn't organized. It wasn't what they were expecting. Half of it, I think is not luck. But I, I think I did get lucky, lucky. Like Janet, who was our PA, our project administrator was incredible. Um, my whole team in CIA was amazing. I really, really enjoyed myself and I felt what I was doing actually had an impact. 
Um, and alongside that, I think a lot of it I find is what you get out is very much dependent on what you put in. So I felt like I worked fairly hard, so therefore I got quite a bit of like satisfaction from that. Um, but all in all, like I said, it was such an exciting experience, one of which I highly, highly recommend. If you have the time, um, do it, really, really do it. For, ne for me, for example, it's really made me want to think more about global, so specifically global health. Um, and now I feel like I'm really kind of pushing myself in that direction. And I wonder if I didn't do VSO, would I be thinking about that? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was really great. If you have any questions, comment it down below. I hope that I helped you a little bit. Um, yeah, subscribe, like, check out my social medias. But yeah, that's all from me and I'll see you soon. Bye.